Namaste. <laughs> so I'm here in the mountains, in the village. <laughs> As you can see, beautiful landscape. And I chose this spot for a reason. Just look at this. There is no word really to describe it. It's so complex and beautiful. Creation of God. Nothing human made can compare. Isn't it? You could write books and books about this tree and those grasses and th these cows. <laughs> but that doesn't mean you understand them. See, this is the defect of the Western mind, the rational mind, the left brain, that it thinks that words are knowledge. No. Words aren't knowledge. Words are symbols only. They cannot give truth, especially about transcendental things. So, the different arguments of philosophers and religionists and sectarians and those who make a business of teaching religion are all nonsense. <laughs> They're all wrong, every single one of them. Because the word is not the truth. You know that famous saying of Lao Tzu? He who speaks does not know. He who knows does not speak. Why? Because if you know the actual truth, the Tao, the Brahman, the God, whatever, you know that this cannot be communicated in words. So why spend so much useless effort arguing this philosophy and that philosophy and this religion and that God and this other God? It's foolish. Waste of time. Only some people have built a very successful business. Huh? Doing, on, doing that. <laughs> so we think, oh, let me learn from them and then I can imitate them. I've seen it. When I had ashram before, I had about a dozen so-called disciples. Really, the main reason most of them were there was they wanted to become guru themselves. I have to admit, there was a time in my life when I felt like that. I want to uh, study with guru to become guru. That's all. And whatever doctrine is being taught really is secondary, or maybe even third or last. <laughs> it's all bullshit. So all philosophies are wrong because all philosophies are made of words. Now, some are less wrong than others. <laughs> but, you know, I let it slip the other day that Shiva Bhakti has awakened in my heart. So immediately I start getting messages and emails saying, this doctrine of Shaivism is better than this other doctrine of Shaivism. <laughs> no, they're all wrong. Because, why? If Shiva is Brahman, Brahman is transcendental. That means it's beyond all words and concepts. Huh? That's the number one thing about Brahman. He's transcendental. He's beyond. Otherwise, what's the use of approaching Brahman or studying or meditating about Brahman? What's the use of realizing Brahman if 
Brahman is simply, you know, whatever you project on it, whatever your opinion is, huh? whatever words you happen to favor that match your thoughts or whatever. Come on, get real. So yes, some teachings, some philosophies are less wrong than others because they explain more. Like Vedanta. Vedanta is less wrong. Maybe the least wrong of all. Vedanta, Upanishads, Vedas. Well, what do Vedas actually teach? They teach ritual, worship, aradhana. So, they're, they're not trying to tell you what God is. They're trying to tell you, worship God, realize God, and then you will know. This is the point I want to make. Reading books is a good start. It gets you pointed in the right general direction. <laughs> but then you have to practice. And one of the philosophies that's really, really wrong is the one that says, well, once you understand that Brahman is everything and that you are equal to Brahman, then you don't have to do any more puja, japa, or homa, or whatever. Uh, no more worship, no more meditation, no more yoga. That's it. Huh? There's a cartoon by a famous madman of two uh, Zen monks sitting in a monastery and one is saying, the old one is saying to the young one, this is it. This is all there is. Gay and Wilson. Huh? He's a madman. He has to be institutionalized on a regular basis. And here he's saying the same thing, that basically the bad scholars, uh, the uh, unrealized scholars, are saying about Shiva or Brahman. You see, this is nuts. The reason that it's nuts is that there is such a thing as realization. A realization has many different phases and steps and different stages and qualities and so on. But the one thing about realization is that the knowledge comes spontaneously from within. It's prakash. It's directly perceived. It's not book learning. It's not words or concepts. It's beyond words and concepts, which is exactly what Lao Tzu was trying to get at. When he said, those who know do not talk. Those who talk do not know. Because it's just hot air. I'm not saying to disregard the scriptures and the teachers and the philosophers. They have something to offer. But... Ramana Maharshi was fond of this anecdote. He said, if you look in the mirror and you see you need a shave, <laughs> at least a trim, then every mirror is going to tell you the same thing. So if you look in the scriptures or you go to a teacher, they're all going to tell you to practice. Do the practice. Why? To get the realization. Knowing the words is not enough. Sorry. That puts all the word sellers out of business, huh? including me. <laughs> so I'm not in business. I don't take donations. Huh? I don't want to be a guru. I don't want any position or title or anything. Huh? I want to share what I've been given, not from books, although we use the scriptures as a guide sometimes, 
but mainly what has been revealed to me from within. Now, of course, I've known about Shiva. I lived in Tiruvannamalai for five years, and Arunachala Hill is Shiva himself, huh? what's left of the column of fire, the Jyotirlingam. But, of course, he even revealed himself to me. It showed me that he is Arunachala. He is everything. He is you and me. He is all. But that's not bhakti. That's still symbolic knowledge. That's still a concept. But bhakti is something else. Bhakti is beyond that because it is based on the self-revelation of the supreme within the heart. In other words, it's not something you can do. It's something that's given to you. It's a blessing. It's a gift. Precious gift. Irreplaceable and unique. And because it comes directly from God through the heart, it's perfect. It's pure. There's no mistake in it. If you love God through any of the forms, male or female, uh, the form is not so important. That's according to your taste. But what's important is that you have a living connection with the divine, with the absolute that from which everything else has come. That's the important thing. And when that connection becomes alive, then you can realize everything. You can know the significance of everything. You can see everything for what it really is. Because now you have the light of God you have the direct knowledge of what is the absolute. Huh? And everyone can have this. So why pretend? Why bring out all these big words and pretend that you know everything? Huh? Because nobody knows everything. <laughs> All of us have limited senses, limited mind, limited intelligence, limited knowledge, limited experience. So, seek that experience that reveals God from within. Yes, the scriptures are all the same mirror showing the same thing. You need a trim, you need a shave, you need a haircut or whatever. <laughs> so do it. Practice. Chant your mantra. Do your puja. Meditate. And wait for that wonderful day when God reveals himself as the self within all. That is truly the perfection of self-realization. Aung Tatsat Aung Shakti Aung